Hello and welcome to another episode of the Low Budget Review Show. I'm your host, Eric Smith. And today I want to talk about uh, the book The Lurking Season by Christopher Rufty. Uh, but it's a follow-up to an earlier book, so I'm going to mention that real quick. That's The Lurkers. Christopher Rufty. It's Sam Hain. Whoops. Sam Hain. Um, the Lurkers from 2012 introduces us to the Haunchies which are a tiny, savage race of humanoid creatures that live in the cornfields of Doverton, Wisconsin. Uh, I'm reminded of the movie Don't Be Afraid of the Dark. Uh, For anybody who's seen that, I love the original. It scared the hell out of me when I was a kid, but you had these weird-looking little creatures, and the haunchies remind me of that. They're often, most often described as being about the size of a baby. And they have sharp, filed down, pointed teeth and crude weapons and just rags for clothes. And they, uh, they're they just little savages. So uh, the Lurkers introduces us to them. You've got this whole cast of characters that um, sort of get trapped in Doverton and are hunted by the Haunchies. Um, that's very, very basic outline of this book, since this isn't the one I'm actually reviewing. Uh, I did enjoy this very much. It's very violent. It's very gory. Um, As I was reading it, I was making certain assumptions, and uh, Rufty just flipped those uh, upside down and inside out, and um, every time I'd think, I was like, all right, I know what's going on here, and then boom, I had to reevaluate the situation and go, okay, well, that didn't work out, so... Maybe this is what's going on. Nope, that wasn't it. And I really like that. Kept me uh, kept me on my toes. Only complaint, if I had to make one, I think the ending feels kind of rushed. Um, but it's still just a very well-written, entertaining book. So that was 2012's The Lurkers. What I'm really here to talk about is brand new book, The Lurking Season. I like this cover a little more simply because of the, the contrast of the blood on the snow. Again, it's Sam Hain, of course. Uh, so, this just came out. Um, I believe its official publication date is February 2015. Um, and this takes place three years after the events of The Lurkers. And this time, we have a group of young adults who have come to Doverton uh, because they want to open a center for victims of abuse. And... They, it's it's winter time, and they've gone out there to um, uh, do repairs and everything on on the house that they've bought that they're going to use as the center. They bought, I think it's the Carlson farmhouse, um, which played a part in the Lurkers, of course. So they've all come out. They have to do all these repairs uh, to get the thing ready, the place ready, and. Um, it's right in the middle of, of uh, haunchy territory, so, you know, that can't be good. And uh, so you've got Randy and Chad and Heather and Steph and Debbie and Sean and Ted. And I feel like I'm forgetting somebody, but I'm not sure. So that's all. <laughs> they're all out there. Um, they're all very interesting characters. Uh, they all have some pretty decent backstory pretty sure they've all been victims of of something in their past, which is why they want to uh, create this center and and help other people. Uh, Then you've also got um, Erin, who's a writer, and Lawrence, who's her photographer, and she's writing a book about the story, the legend of the Haunchies. So she's out there uh, in Doverton, and she needs, she wants pictures on the Carlson property where some stuff took place three years ago. Um, so they're out there as well as, as well as some other characters uh, that I don't need to go into. Um, and mayhem ensues. Um, that's basically all you really need to know um, as far as plot goes. It's... Um, the, the, the setup, to me, was very reminiscent of Friday the 13th, 
um, when we're fir first introduced to Randy, he's uh, fixing the gutters on the house, the old farmhouse. And as soon as I read that, Friday the 13th just popped into my head. Because uh, in that movie, you have a bunch of young adults going to an isolated location, uh, rebuilding the place, fixing it up so that a new group of people can come in and enjoy it. Of course, in Friday the 13th, it's a summer camp. And here it's the Center for Abuse abuse Victims. Um, very similar setup. Uh, not that that's a bad thing. I'm just saying that's what popped it. I mean, immediately popped into my head. And you even have a scene when uh, Heather and Debbie and Steph and Sean and Ted and the other person that I swear is there and I can't remember. Um, when they come into town, they stop at a diner and there's a local that warns them away, or tries to warn them away. Again, very reminiscent of Friday the 13th, that type of movie. Um, but I enjoyed it. It, it gave it that sort of uh, B-movie horror feel, which is something I really like. Uh, very, very violent. Very, very graphic. Um, very gory, so it's not for the faint of heart, but if you're a fan of this type of thing like I am, it's a lot of fun. Um, again, a lot of uh, assumptions and expectations just kind of flipped. Uh, Rufty's pretty good at that. Um, you can't, you can't just sit back and think you know what's going on, because he's going to spin you around. Uh, uh Interestingly, to me anyway, uh, because it has that sort of Friday the 13th setup, um, it does not have, uh, in my opinion, those horror archetypes. Um, I, I, you don't have the, the big dumb kind of bullying jock or the uh, vapid beauty queen or the rich bitch. Um, they're all very well-rounded characters in this book. Um, I think I said they all have decent backstory. They've all been, um, or for the most part, most of them have some sort of abuse or something in their past that makes them want to help others, which is a nice thing. They're not all they're not all do-gooders though. I mean, you do have the smart aleck guy, and you do have. Uh, I think they're all pretty much described as hot chicks, um, <laughs> but they're not one-dimensional hot chicks, and they're not one-dimensional. I think the guys are all pretty hot, too, uh, but they're not one-dimensional. <laughs> um, so, a good cast of characters. Uh, unfortunately, they're not all going to make it. <laughs> but that's the kind of book that it is. Uh, one of the other things, there's a, a, a horror trope that I, initially I was going to say is relatively new, but I don't really think it is. Uh, so hopefully somebody will know actually how old this horror trope is. And what that is, is the uh, the creature, the monster, whatever, that can no longer breed with its own kind, so it needs human women to breed. Um, over the last few years, I've read uh, some novels that have this, uh, I think most prominently is the Beast House series by Richard Lehman. Um, it's a great series. Uh, Richard Lehman's kind of hit and miss for me. But I really enjoyed all the Beast House stuff. Um, then you've got Castaways by uh, Brian Keane, which I think is unofficially connected to the Beast House stories. I know it's supposed to be his... Um, the Brian Keene's uh, sort of Richard Lehman homage. Um, but I'm just not sure how officially it's supposed to tie in to the Beast House stuff or if it's just supposed to be a nod to it. Uh, but that's another one where you've got these creatures that need human women to breed. Uh, Topsiders, a fantastic debut novel by Scott Tyson. Same thing. Creatures need women to breed. Uh, so, again, a lot of stuff I've read over the last few years have this, but, uh, and the, the Beast House books are, are pretty old, well, relatively old, older than the other two I mentioned, 
the seller, the first in the Beast House series, was Richard Lehman's first book. So, not sure what the copyright on that is. But, um, so this is an idea that, that's been around for a while. Just not sure how long. If anybody knows, please let me know. Excuse me. That's horrible. Um, so anyway, so you've got that going on in here. Um, so the Haunchies are very territorial, uh, and they need women to breed, so you know that everybody in here is just haunchy bait. <laughs> They're all, getting in, all going to end up in Haunchyville, as uh, some of the characters call it. But um, just a lot of fun, if you like uh, just good horror movies. Um, I guess Feast. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Feast. Uh, the creatures in that are quite a bit bigger uh, than the Haunchies, but if you've ever seen Feast, there's a lot of uh, the creatures wanting to breed kind of things going on. Uh, and it's a very over-the-top, violent, bloody movie. Um, and this is really over-the-top, violent, and bloody, and um, some other stuff going on. Uh, that I don't need to mention simply because um, you need to discover it for yourself. Discover it for yourself. Wow. I'm just mumbly Joe today. I think it's the cold. It's below zero out. It's not that cold inside. But uh, although it's creeping in, one of the hinges on the door, the back door, inside hinge is covered with frost. That's how cold it is outside. But anyway, um, so I think that covers just about everything I wanted to say about this. Um, yeah, I mean, it's good stuff. I like Christopher Rufty's stuff a lot. Uh, the Lurkers I read before I started doing these video reviews, which is why there is no review of that. But I didn't want to take up a lot of this time to talk about that since trying to promote the brand new one boost sales i did do a review of angel board by christopher rufty uh which was really good i believe i have one other book by him that i have not read yet um so i have high expectations for that you know uh, uh so yeah I, I really like you know it's a very simple cover but i like the stark black and white and then boom you've got those splashes of blood on the snow it's a very effective cover um as compared to, see, this one's just kind of meh. It's just meh. See the two of them? <laughs> anyway, that's the new one. Uh, Sam Hain doing some good stuff, as always. Well, not always, but most of the time. I give him a 75% rating. Uh, you just have to you have to know what you like. You're not going to like everything that any publisher puts out, I don't think. But, uh, okay, so, again, once I start really rambling like this, I think it's time to call it quits. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, so, I will have a link. I'll have lots of links this time. I'm going to have a link for The Lurkers, which is falling over. I'll have a link for this. I'm going to throw in links for Castaways by Brian Keane and Topsiders by Scott Tyson, because those are both excellent. Um, maybe if you can... I don't know if you can still get The Cellar, the first Beast House book. If I can find a link for a copy that's available, I'll, I'll throw that in there too. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, or corrections, uh, please put them in the comments below. If anyone knows how old the horror trope of creatures needing human women... To breed, if anybody knows when that started, throw that down there in the comments. Um, comments are open for spoilers. Just please be polite. Put spoiler warning down. Um, but I'm willing to talk about anything that's in here. Uh, as long as we're all uh, nice and let people know if there's going to be spoilers. Um, so, comments open. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Um, and I think for now, 
that's all I've got. Uh, oh, you know, it's really cold outside, so everybody out there be safe. If you're in the cold areas of the country or the world, bundle up, be safe, drive carefully. Uh, the roads are crazy out there. It's been below zero uh, the last couple of nights here. And I know it's worse in other parts of the country. So everybody, take care of yourselves. Stay in and read a good book. Um, and just everybody, take care of yourselves. People where it's too hot. People where it's too wet. Just everybody be safe. And uh, until next time, read more books. <laughs>